pretty big week. So yeah, Saturday night ran 10K. Um, and then Sunday morning, woke up pretty early, did two and a half hour run, because I was training for a marathon. Um, and then flew back to London last night. And then, yeah, this morning, just an easy 10 mile run. And Wednesday, we're off to Font-Rameau for four and a bit weeks for marathon training. So yeah, it's full on. <laughs> Yeah, so we're at Ascot Racecourse, so we run here um, and in Windsor Great Park. Yeah, you can kind of do a bit of both if you start here. So yeah, it's good actually when it rains because there's not as many people around. But I get annoyed like weaving in and out of people that walk are walking around the racecourse. <laughs> so I actually like it when it rains because it's not as busy. So the first K is always slow, but then after that I'd say I don't really go much slower than yeah 420 for an average just because that's just the pace that I run. I don't look at my watch, but that's just the pace that I end up running. So yeah, around 4.20, just go to feel really, but it'll probably be around that. So I wear Boston's or SL's mostly for my easy runs. I chose Boston's today because my SL's are really dirty, so I didn't want to wear them on the camera. <laughs> yeah, and then on my workout days, I'll do Pro 3's. Sometimes I've worn Takumi's, but mostly Pro 3's. All right, Charlotte, this is a homegrown. This is, we don't need uh, the team. We're just going to go for a 10 miler. This is how marathon runners warm up. Two hamstring stretches. You'll probably see that Kipchoge done that before he broke two, right? Nice socks. Show us your nails. They're red chips. Why are you shaking? See ya. I stopped my watch, so I went for a wee and didn't restart it. So that is the brutal honesty. So mine is half of whatever we done. Basically. We did 16.15K in 109. So it's like 417 average. So just pretty standard for an easy, easy run. Yeah, it depends really. If I wake up like starving, then I'll eat before. But if not, then yeah, just fasted run. But for workouts, I always eat before. You have a coffee, right? Yeah, yeah. always coffee. Definitely always coffee and like hydration. Um, but yeah, for easy runs, sometimes I'll just run without. But some, if I wake up starving, then obviously eat before. I feel um, that's very individualized though, isn't it? Yeah, like some it depends. literally can't run without eating. And I think like if somebody out there is like listed and they think, wow, Charlotte, has run 68 minutes and she doesn't eat, I'm gonna run 10 mile and not eat. If you, if you don't do that, like don't try it because it's, it's you know, just do what works for you basically. But yeah, I think it's, it varies for us. But if I'm doing like a big session, like plain oats or- Morton um, Bar. Morton Bar, yeah. I love those solid. Morton Bars. Love it. Yeah. Morton oh, bars. Solid C, normal solid for you. Yeah, I always have the normal one. Yeah, so the chocolate one. Um, bananas. Ba yeah. Bagel just, and a banana for me. Yeah. yeah. With a bit, of, a bit of set honey, not the runny honey, it's a nightmare. Done it dripping down your kit. Uh, and tractor. Yeah, it's called Cafe Fago. I literally started going there with my grandma, like when I was about eight, eight years old. She used to take me there as like a little treat. So I just kept going there all the time. And then, yeah, they always ask about running and like they watch me on the TV and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's a nice little cafe. So we always go there just to get takeaway coffee, smoothie, like. It's got a good menu, right? Yeah, it's got a good oh, menu. Every, everything, yeah. They've got a dish named after you yet? No, they don't. Uh, they do kind of, they do treat us, I don't know. Like yeah. sometimes we get it for free and stuff. So they, took, they, they look after they us. They took my favorite um, smoothie off the menu, but when I go in there, I just ask for it and they'll just whip it up for me <laughs> still. Uh, it depends on the day, obviously, again, every day is different, but on an easy day, usually just like getting admin stuff done, like go back. I've got physio later um, and then I'll do a second run tonight as well. I don't know if you're doing a second run. Pack in as well, because we got to unpack from our trip and then pack for the next trip. So just living out of a suitcase at home at the moment. <laughs> a lot of washing. But yeah, let's go and get coffee, I reckon. All right, sweet. Let's, yeah, do, let's it. do it. Let's do it. 
Watching the Nicki Minaj video, what's no, going on? Yeah, that's Dungeon S. <laughs> <laughs> the old railway at the beach. I bet she had a great time. I bet she, she Can we stay another week? <laughs> They they, uh, they look as good as that in February as they do in July. There was a storm probably a couple of months ago. And we looked out and they'd gone. <laughs> yeah, but do you know where do you know where, do you know where one was? It, one got gone in here and behind. So I don't know how that happened. Anyway, welcome. British Athletics. What's that? Steve Burnham. Is that funding, mate? Probably not. Take your shoes off, yeah. Legends. Got Domino's pizza. Make yourself at home. Nah, it's a new, it's an updated pitch on my coaching badge. I thought it was drug testing letter. What's the, uh, what's the story behind this? My dad, <laughs> there's no story. He's just like retired and bored and uh, does- We needed some color. Does art and he was like, I'm gonna give you this. And we were like, yeah, great. So he signed it, dated it. He's very- well, uh, our, our, our biggest masterpiece is to your, behind you and to your left. That's my dog, Chloe. That's Chloe, so she's, uh, we got a picture, we got a picture done of a queen's head, so. That's straight. <laughs> How'd you want this damn ball? Mum taught me that. You do this sometimes, don't you? <laughs> okay. Why are you going to altitude now specifically? Yeah, uh, a few reasons. I like just going away um, to just focus on running, like no other distractions. It's just nice to change the scenery, go away, um, just focus on the running. Um, obviously you get the altitude benefit as well, which I do find is, yeah, gives you a little extra percent. Font um, yeah, it's good for running. There's like the lake, which I like running around. Um, it's about 8K around. Um, it's just good weather. Like this time of year, is, every day is pretty much good weather. Um, yeah, it's just nice. <laughs> I still like it. It's easy to get to as well. Like the travel, like too far, it's Europe, so yeah. Yeah, for me, I don't like to come straight back down and race. Um, I've tried it a few times and I've just felt a bit flat. Um, so I like to leave at least like almost three weeks before I race. Like not really, I obviously don't have the immediate benefit then of the altitude, but I find it's better just to go to altitude to get fit and then come back and race. So I'm not going there to get the immediate benefit for the race. I'm going there to get fit and then to come back and have the gains of the camp more than the immediate altitude benefit. Um, just cause yeah, I found like, I get a bit flat if I come straight down and race. The build up has been pretty good um, so far, touching wood. Had a good base training in San Maritz. Um, yeah, San Maritz, <laughs> I'm trying to think, Font Ramo. <laughs> San Maritz, um, so before we go to Font Ramo. Um, so yeah, literally just starting doing the marathon specific stuff now. Whereas before it was more like just getting a lot of miles in and like the sessions were kind of just basic sessions, but now it's more specific sessions, eight weeks to go. Um, so yeah, this is like the week where I start doing the marathon training. Uh, and chose Berlin because it's meant to be a fast course. I'll let you know after. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think like a bit of both. I obviously want to see how the training goes the next eight weeks before I decide like a time that I'm going to go for. I always like base what I'm going to go for based on the training because then I know what I can run. The, the training like pretty much shows me what I'm what shape I'm in obviously based on the fact that you run with men it's a fast course obviously do want to go for a time um so yeah I'll just see how the training goes and then like adjust what time I go for but yeah I'll definitely be shooting for like a specific time obviously want to run under the Olympic qualifying time which is 2:26:40. yeah sometimes it's like difficult but once I get like set in a location then I'll just stick to my routine religiously and obviously like I'm not having um like ch chunks of time where i'm 
away traveling and like not training, like always fit training around. That's why like yesterday in Berlin, I made sure like I knew where I was gonna long run. So like we got up early at eight o'clock, I was running, like got my two and a half hours in, like that's the main aim of the day. Like I always also plan flights around training. So I made sure that we weren't flying out early so I could get the long run in uh, before travel. Cause I know that like after a travel, even if it's just a short flight, I feel like not so good. So didn't want to have to do two and a half hours after traveling. So I made sure it was an evening flight so I could get the long run done. So just stuff like that, like little things. Yeah, I think it is boring when you don't have a goal. So I always have to have like something to focus on. So obviously I've got Berlin Marathon now, I focus on that and I know what I'm doing after Berlin actually. So then I'll have another goal. Um, can't tell you what that is yet. <laughs> and then after that, that goal, I'll, I'll choose another goal that I'll have to focus on. So I always have to have something. I think the times when I'm like a little bit bored or it's hard is when I don't have a goal. Yeah, so I'm gonna do a half marathon, either the big half or Great North Run. I haven't confirmed which one. One's the week before the other, so I need to, my coach is like deciding which one I do based on the training. Exactly that. So that's why like he hasn't decided which one will fit in better because the big half I think is three weeks before Berlin and then the Great North Run's two weeks before. So it's whether like which one will fit in better with the training because I will be going into it like base basically full on training still because I can't taper three weeks before and then yeah have a really long taper for the marathon because the marathon's the end goal so it's basically working back which one will work better. Um, last year I actually did both the big half and then the week after the Great North Run and then two weeks later I was due to run London but obviously got food poisoning. But um, I've actually found that was okay doing both because I treated them both like training runs. Um, and I ran pretty well still considering that I was like not tapering for them. But yeah, I think it depends which one. I think I'm just gonna do one this time just to minimize risk. <laughs> um, and then yeah, go into the marathon.